as I was just telling my wife here, I am not a broadcaster. Uh, she thinks I am, she's giving me pointers, but I will suck at this. Uh, but I will welcome you to our channel here, and I appreciate you stopping by. This is your favorite author to be, Edric Frost, and with me tonight is my wife, Kala. Say hello, Kala. Hello. So this is story time, where we read for you so you don't have to, and we read it our way. From Irish fairies and Nordic folk tales to Japanese mythology, we've got you covered. And tonight's tale is Tigo Kane and the Corpse, literally translated from the Irish by Douglas Hyde. And here we begin. <laughs> there was once a grown-up lad in County Littrum. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of that There's in this a one. Lot that of is that. a I don't know how to pronounce Irish. Irish is awesome, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It's gonna come out how it come out. <laughs> All right, there was once a grown up lad in County Letrum, and he was strong. He was strong, he was lively, and he was the son of a rich farmer, like that's a thing. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, All rich time. farmers. I mean, Bill Gates, right? Yeah, well, technically. I'm, I'm sure he's, he's farmed a lot. Well, clearly. Clearly, he's the, he best farmer. he's the best farmer. He has the skin for it. He has all the farms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, he's very pallid. <laughs> Definitely not a farmer again. No. Okay, yeah, well, we're getting sorry. back to the story. <laughs> and, and there was a son of a rich farmer. Uh, I'm, we're only one line into this. This yeah. is going to take a while, but you're going to love it. Great. His father had plenty of money, and he did not spare it on the son. Well, <laughs> that's how you create bad children. <laughs> All right, I am getting into this. Accordingly, when the boy grew up, he liked sport better than work, you don't say. Well, shocking. Uh, today, that'd be video games. Yeah. And as his father had no other children, he loved this one so much that he allowed him to do in everything just as it pleased himself. That sounds like a great recipe. <laughs> he was very extravagant. That's getting worse. What is he farming? Uh, the, the, uh, the old Irish equivalent of weed? I don't know. <laughs> I, mean... uh, I don't know where you're getting all this money. There, I'm just fascinated. There has never been money in farming in the history of man. So, yeah. Not unless you're a corrupt person like, like Mr. Fowler. Um, he was very extravagant and he used, he used to scatter the gold money as another person would scatter the white. I don't know what you're going to get to there. What, what, what does it mean to scatter the white? I don't know. And in 2023, it's got to be even worse. Yeah, it seems that that's where my brain goes. Uh, you, I mean, it's, it's not great. Uh, you need to put that Maybe down. Maybe that explains why he's a rich farmer. You, you need to, to keep that under under wraps there with your oh, white, well, with oh, your that, white yeah. scattering. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't don't do it. All right. He was seldom found to be at home. But if there was a fair, or a race, or a gathering within 10 miles of him, you were dead certain to find him there. And he seldom spent a night in his father's house, but he used to be always out rambling. Wow. He is a rambler. I think there's some 1970s songs about that or something. Yes. And like Sean Bui, long ago, there was some Irish words that I cannot pronounce, but I'm going to say it. like words that way. Uh, it, it, Raj no. Gatch, <laughs> E. Imbrolac A. Lane. Which you totally understand. I'm sure. I'm going to probably send that to an Irish friend later. The love of every girl in... <laughs> People uh, love it. In quotes, I think it's telling us what it means. The love of every girl in the breast of his shirt. Well, which is you know something. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was a philanderer, not a, phila a philanthropist. <laughs> and it's Minnie's the kiss he got and he gave, for he was very handsome. And there wasn't a girl in the country but would fall in love with him, only for him to fasten his two eyes on her. And it was for that someone made this ram stanza on him. Some, some, some girl wrote him a poem. I'm sure this yeah, is yeah. classy. Yeah, it's it, great. Uh, well, since it's a girl writing him the poem, 
You have to oh, read no, it. No, 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 no. And it's Irish. <laughs> no, 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 no. So so you got you got I can't say that because you got to pronounce it that. <laughs> <laughs> you got four lines in Irish and then it goes back to English. So 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 you just uh, help yourself here. <laughs> I mean, I know how I pronounce it, but I don't want to pronounce it that way. <laughs> pronounce it another way, Kala. Fush a roger great boy. Sounds like such a lovely love poem, Kala. I wish you wrote me one. I might. Okay. I might. Me. I am getas moria. Behith mar ata. Two more lines. Yeah. That's a long word. Uh... <laughs> this letter's not even go together. <laughs> That's not it's even a word. That's not even a word. Okay. <laughs> so You're I almost there. You're almost there. You're almost there. You're almost there. Anos. Anos. That's very good. Nah. It sounds like you're speaking Spanish, but... Look at the road. Okay. It's for yeah. kisses he's rambling. It isn't much wonder, for that was his way. <clears throat> he's like an old hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> So that is, you a that is the uh, the first that was ever heard yeah. a man be called an old hedgehog. Uh, he's like an old hedgehog. At night he'll be scrambling from this place to that, but he'll sleep in the day. Well, well okay. Continuing okay. on with this uh, <laughs> fantastic tale from the Irish. At last he became very wild and unruly. As opposed to before. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which is moderate. Uh, yes. <sighs> he wasn't to be seen day nor night in his father's house, but always rambling. He does a lot of rambling. Yeah. Or going on his Kaylee, which is a night visit in, uh, yeah, according to the, uh, the notation here. From place to place and from house to house, so that the old people used to shake their heads and say to one another, It's easy seen. What will happen to the land when the old man dies? His son will run through it in a year, and it won't stand him that long itself. Well, those are some, some wise old Irish folk. Yeah, no, they're not wrong. Used to be always gambling and card playing and drinking all together. But his father never minded his bad habits, never punished him. Not, not much of a father. But it happened one day that the old man was told that the son had ruined the character of a girl. Oh, well, well, shame, uh -oh. Uh, shame, shame, he ruined the character of a girl in the neighborhood, and he was greatly angry. And he called the son to him and said to him, quietly and sensibly, Avic, which means, oh, son, he says, you know, I loved you greatly up to this, and I never stopped you from doing your choice thing, whatever it was, and I kept plenty of money with you. I always hoped to leave you the house and land, and all I had after myself would be gone. But I heard a story of you today that has disgusted me with you. I cannot tell you the grief that I felt when I heard such a thing of you, and I tell you now plainly that unless you marry that girl, I'll leave house and land and everything to my brother's son. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Now you're a parent. Well, uh, yeah, all of a sudden. All of a sudden. <clears throat> I never could leave it to anyone who would make so bad a use of it as you. To yourself, deceiving women and coaxing girls. Shame. <sighs> Settle with yourself now. Whether you'll marry that girl and get my land as a fortune with her, or refuse to marry her and give up all that was coming to you. And tell me in the morning which of the two things you have chosen. Well, it's back into some uh, some Irish here. Oach, Domnu, Shiri. I have no idea what that means. Father, you wouldn't say that to me. Am I such a good son as I am? Uh, who told you I wouldn't marry the girl? Says he. <laughs> right. But his father was gone, and the lad knew well enough that he would keep his word too. And he was greatly troubled in his mind. For as quiet and as kind as his father was, he never went back on a word that he had once said. And there wasn't another man in the country who was harder to bend than he was. The boy did not rightly, no, the boy did not know rightly what to do. He was in love with the girl indeed, 
and he hopes to marry her sometime or other. <laughs> that sounds yeah, proper, you know. Whatever. But he would much sooner have remained another while as he was, and follow on at his old tricks, drinking, sporting, and playing cards, and along with that, he was angry that his father should order him to marry, and should threaten him if he did not do it. Yes. <laughs> Isn't my father a great fool? He says he to himself. I don't know about that. I mean, maybe in never disciplining you, perhaps. I was gonna say it. I was, I was ready, mistakes were made, I was ready enough, and only too anxious to marry Mary. Well. Her name's Mary. Well, Mary sounds like I mean, she's like a Irish, great, I mean, you know, yeah. that's probably named Mary. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty common. Pretty common. I'm sure Mary is awesome. And now since he threatened me, Faith, I have a great mind to let it go another while. Well. Well. Mr. Yeah. Attitude. Well, he does have the attitude. Yeah. I, I'm not sure when we're getting to the corpse, but I'm looking forward to it. This was promised in the title of the, the story. Yeah, I keep waiting for the bear yet. The corpse is coming. Oh, Just so hang I'm on. Excited about Somewhere that. in here is the corpse. Is but a longer story. short story. Yeah. Here, so <laughs> His mind was so much excited that he remained between two notions as to what to do. He walked out into the night at last to cool his heated blood and went on to the road. He lit a pipe. And, as the night was fine, he walked and walked on until the quick pace made him begin to forget his trouble. I bet he's coming to a corpse. Oh, please. Please, please. The night was bright, and, the, be a magic and the moon was half full. Oh, uh, well... But not full full. Yeah, just half. So, half a corpse. But it's an optimistic moon. Oh. Uh, it's waxing. <laughs> there was not a breath of wind blowing, and the air was calm and mild. He walked on for nearly three hours. That's Right walk. Awfully far. When he suddenly remembered that it was late in the night, he didn't know. <laughs> wow. This oh, yeah. child's an idiot. He is totally an idiot. He's like, oh, 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 hell, it's it's night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's for just three hours. For three hours. That's why it's what dark. Kind of and and there's a, like? a, a half, a, a good one, apparently. <laughs> apparently. And it was late at night, <laughs> and time for him to turn. Yeah, and yeah Mujer, three and a half hours back. He exclaimed. Musha! What, what does that mean? Does anybody I, I know? I will find out. Well, we do know an Irishman. Yes. We're going to find, find out, out all of this, and he's gonna he gonna going to have a hysterical laugh laughter at this. He's, I'm going to make it, <laughs> yeah, listen to it. Musha, I think I forgot myself, says he. It must be near 12 o'clock now. Well, that wasn't that late. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not that late. Well, it, dep it depends on, you know, the time you of year. It, it, you know, if it's summer. I think they have the electric scooter. I don't think so. No, it's only at 6 o'clock. It got dark at the hour they said it got dark. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. This is in primitive times. Yeah. You okay. know. Yeah. <laughs> the word was hardly out of his mouth when he heard the sound of many voices and the trampling of feet on the road before him. I don't know who can be out so late at night as this and on such a lonely road said he to himself. I, I, I don't know, like... like it's a uh, road. Like, okay, I guess at midnight, that would be really odd. It's like bandit crawly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Who we, else? we're talking back then. If you're on the road at midnight, you're up to good. Yeah. Yeah. Highwayman. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not doing good stuff. He stood listening. I had gotten off the road. Okay. He, well, he's not a bright one. Mm -hmm. And he so, heard the voices. Of many people talking through other, through other, I don't understand what that means. Through other. Yeah. Well, okay, whatever. Okay. We don't have to know what it means. No. He, he stood listening and he heard the voices of many people talking through other. But he could not understand what they were saying. Oh, Vera, said he. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, this guy is. You've been walking really... for three and a half hours. It's midnight. You're it's on the not, road in it's the not, middle of nowhere. It's not Irish or English. They have. Well, I hope it's not French. I mean, I that... uh, uh, <laughs> wouldn't you, want to catch Frenchmen on the road at you're midnight. You're gonna be in a bad time. It's just that's not gonna be fun, man. <laughs> it can't be their Frenchmen. Oh, we did say that. Next. <laughs> nice. I, I didn't read ahead on that. Oh, nice. <laughs> 
he went on a couple yards further and he saw well enough by the light of the moon a band of little people coming towards oh, him. Oh, is it the pesky fairies? <laughs> fairies, leprechauns. Oh, I hope it's leprechauns. You know, the, the people, I, I was going to say their name, but not on YouTube. Oh. And, and, they, <laughs> and they were, I, I don't want to offend. No. I don't no, want to offend. No. They're, they're just small. They're little. They're just small. Can you see little people? Yeah. Is that okay. Yes. Okay. And of little people coming towards him, and they were carrying something big and heavy with them. Oh, murder, says he to himself. Sure, it can't be that they're the good people that's in it. Good people. He's talking about the fairies. The good they people. Call yeah, they call them the, the good people. The good people. Uh, I know so that he's, much. Yeah, so he's talking about the fairies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're always up to no good. Every rib, a single hair that was on his head stood up. And there fell a shaking on his bones, for he saw that they were coming to him fast. Maybe get off the well, road, well, you idiot. <laughs> well, these are like like a band of of like fast running fairies. Well, clearly, and they're carrying. I bet they're carrying a corpse. <clears throat> well, that would be very cool. Yes. He looked at them again and perceived that there were were about twenty little men in it. That's quite a few. That's a lot. And, and there was not a man at all of them higher than about three feet. Or three feet and a half. Well, let's get specific. Yes, and uh, some of them were gray yeah. and seemed very old. It's getting odd. It's you know? strange. He looked again, but he could not make out what was the heavy thing they were carrying until they came up to him. And then they all stood round about him. Why did he stand there? What a moron. <laughs> this is definitely a moron of a child. He is an epic level. They threw the heavy thing down on the road. And he saw on the spot that it was a dead body. Finally. Finally. <laughs> <clears throat> he became as cold as the death. And there was not a drop of blood running in his veins when an old little gray manin came up to him and said, Isn't it lucky we met you, Tigo Kane? Oh, they always know your name, too. They do always they know always your name. They always know your name. Yeah, we've been reading uh, through some of these Irish fairy tales. They always know your name. Uh, yeah, and we decided to start uh, <laughs> doing videos of it because we amused so ourselves fun. so much with it. <laughs> we, we figured you should be amused as well. Anyways, carrying on with the story because we have a dead body now. And Sweet. isn't it lucky we met you, Tigo Kane? Oh. <clears throat> That's bad. No, it's not good. Poor Teague could not bring out a word at all, nor open his lips, if he were to get the world for it, and so he gave no answer. Teague O'Kane, said the little gray man again, isn't it timely you met us? Teague could not answer him. Teague O'Kane, says he, the third time, isn't it lucky and timely that we met you? Oh, he's creepy. Yeah, that's a creepy little... He sounds like Man. a leprechaun. In my head, he's looking like a leprechaun. Well, yeah. He, why not? I, I mean, these are fairies, but sometimes fairies are leprechauns in these stories, or, you know, something like that. But Teague remained silent, for he was afraid to return an answer, and his tongue was as if it was tied to the roof of his mouth. Yeah, I'd be a little freaked out, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like road. if you're out at midnight on the road, and, road and like the the black eyed children <laughs> come up to you and you let them surround you and start talking out your name to you, with like the corpse at your feet, yeah. the corpse at your I feet mean, you know, I mean that that's like say, that's like an analogous to to old Irish people being out there and getting the the fairies around them with a dead body. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. The little gray man turned to his companions, and there was there was joy in his bright yeah, little baby. eye. And we don't know what that joy is. No. Nope, and now, he says, Tigo Kane hasn't said a word. We can do with him what we please. Teeg, Teeg, says he. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't want them. But to, they're not French. You, you don't, they're not French. Well, they're not French. Silver but, lining, I guess, maybe. And they're small, so that might help when, when they do things <laughs> to you. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, but yeah, like it, it's a toss up because there's tall, they're short, but there's like 20 of them. <laughs> but anyways, he said, Teague, Teague, says he, you're living a bad life, and we can make a slave of you now, and you cannot withstand us, for there's no use in trying to go against us. Lift that corpse. 
I don't well, know what he's getting on about this corpse about. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't, Teague was so frightened that he was only able to utter the two words, which is, I get it. Um, he said, I won't. In his petulant little voice, I added well, that. I mean, I well, but that. he is probably correct. For as frightened as he was, he was obstinate and stiff. The same <laughs> as ever. He sounds like he needs a death. <laughs> Just saying. Well, you know. Spoiled. Yeah. Tigo Kane won't let the corpse, said the little manine, whatever that is, yeah. with a wicked little laugh. Can you give us a wicked little laugh? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, for as frightened as he... Oh, wait, no, here we are. Right. Skip. Oh, no, I, I skipped a, a back on the line. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, Tigo Kane won't lift the corpse, said the little manine with a wicked little laugh. For all the world, like the breaking of a lock of dry capines, uh, says Roger Twix here, and with a little harsh voice like the striking of cracked bell. Tigo Kane won't lift the corpse. Make him lift it. That's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and before the word was out of his mouth, they had all gathered round poor Teague. And they all talking and laughing through other. There's that phrase again. Yeah, I don't that, understand that, that, that phrase. Like a it, it, it's a, it's a, thing. a little yeah. turn of words. Teague tried to run from them. Well, it was no. about time. You know, you could have just walked off the road. That's yeah, before, say. yeah. Walk. But they followed him. I mean, they're a bunch of fast little people. <laughs> and uh, a man of the, a man of them stretched out his foot before him as he ran, so that Teague was thrown in a heap on the road. He, he ran on the road. This, this dude is a moron. <laughs> he is a absolute he is moron. Like next level moron. And he he lets a short fairy trip him. Yeah. Huh. Even though he's like twice their height almost. <sighs> then before he could rise up, the fairies caught him. <clears throat> some by the hands and some by the feet, and they held him tight in a way that he could not stir with his face against the ground. Six or seven of them raised the body then and pulled it over to him. Okay, this is going to get real weird. <laughs> I, I don't know if we can even put this on YouTube. Do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it anyways, yeah. And left it down on his back. So he's gonna piggyback, like piggyback ride the corpse. Is that what we're we're doing now? I don't think <coughs> or is he so. Still I, on the I, 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 he's on the ground. I think the oh, corpse that's is super awkward. Is it's it, like, eh. it's like <laughs> I think the corpse is having his way with him. Oh no, no no. <laughs> that's why they oh. threw it on him. Okay. Uh. I mean, we'll see, but oh. that, that's what, that's what I think they're doing. Anyways, they le left the corpse on his back. The breast of the corpse was squeezed against Teague's back and shoulders, and the arms of the corpse were thrown around Teague's neck. <laughs> then they stood back from him a couple of yards and let him get up. Okay, well, I, that's a weird turn. He rose, foaming at the mouth and cursing, and he shook himself. <laughs> Why are you foaming at the mouth? Well, because Thinking, they're making him do something, and he, he's spoiled. And uh, well, so well, he was foaming at the mouth, maybe because of what the corpse was doing yeah. uh, on his back. <laughs> Thinking to throw the corpse off his back, but his fear and his wonder were great when he found that the two arms had a tight hold around his own neck, uh -huh. and that the two legs were squeezing his hips firmly. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I told you! I told you! Okay. This took a turn. <laughs> and that, however strongly he tried, he could not throw it off any more than a horse can throw off its saddle. <sighs> Being ridden by a corpse. Yes. He was terribly frightened then, and he thought he was lost. Oh, Chone! Forever! He said to himself. It's the bad life I'm leading that has given the good people this power over me. I promise to God and Mary, Peter and Paul, Patrick and Bridget, that I'll mend my ways for as long as I have to live if I come clear out of this danger, and I'll marry the girl. <laughs> it only took a corpse. Maybe his father summoned the fairies to teach him a lesson. 
did his father summon the corpse to um, the thing, molest well, him? Well, he, just, he wasn't specific <laughs> enough. He wasn't. You, you have to be you very need specificity. You have to be very specific with yes. fairies, or otherwise you get a corpse on your back attached to your hip, hip doing in things. A weird way. And, and a very awkward thing. Uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The little gray man came up to him again and said he to him, Now, Tegan, says he, you didn't lift the body when I told you to lift it. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and see how you were made to lift it? Perhaps when I tell you to bury it, you won't bury it until you're made to bury it. Well. That, that is uh, a fairy with a lot of attitude. Yes. After throwing a corpse on him. Yeah. Anything at all that I can do for your honor, said Teague, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> for he was getting sense already, and if it had not been for the great fear that was on him, he never would have let that civil word slip out of his mouth. <clears throat> <clears throat> the little man laughed a sort of laugh again. You're getting quiet now, Teague, says he. I'll go bail but you'll be quiet enough before I'm done with you. Listen to me now, Tigo Kane. And if you don't obey me in all I'm telling you to do, you'll repent it. You must carry with you this corpse that is on your back to Team Poldemus, and you must bring it into the church with you and make a grave for it in the very middle of the church. And you must raise up the flags and put them down again the very same way I don't know what that means. Yeah, it, like, it, probably why, why would you put up the flag if, if you're going to take it down? I don't know. And put them down again the very same way, and you must carry the clay out of the church and leave the place as it was when you came, so that no one could know that there had been anything changed. But that's not all. Maybe that the body won't be allowed to be buried in that church. Perhaps some other man has the bed. That's... Uh, so he's gonna dig someone else up on accident. Are, are we gonna like, replace oh, like this a spot's taken? But like, Move like on. I, I, I'm sorry, Saint Patrick, but I have to bury this corpse here. <laughs> You'll just have to go elsewhere. I mean, okay. And if so, it's likely he won't share it with this one. <laughs> if you don't get leave to bury it in Temple Demas, you must carry it to Carrick Fadvik Oris and bury it in the churchyard there. And if you don't get it into that place, take it with you to Temple Ronan. And if that churchyard is closed on you, take it to Imlog Fada. And if you're not able to bury it there, you've no more to do than to take it to Kilbridia. And you can bury it there without hindrance. How many corpses is he gonna dig up in the process of trying to find an all empty of them. spot? And I how can't, many people all are of them. buried in Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot of people, yeah. That's an awful lot of digging. It's, you know, I cannot tell you what one of those churches is. The other one where you will have leave to bury the corpse under the clay. But I know that it will be allowed you to bury him at some church or other of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hilarious. If you do this work rightly, we will be thankful to you. And you will have no cause to grieve. But if you are slow or lazy, believe me, we shall take satisfaction of you. Oh, <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Uh, yeah, we know what that means. <laughs> when the gray little man had done speaking, his comrades laughed and clapped their hands together. Blick, blick, wee, wee, they all cried. I don't know why they do that. That's weird. That's weird. Go on, go on. You have eight hours before you till daybreak, and if you haven't this man buried before the sun rises, you're lost. Well, okay. <clears throat> and then they'll have satisfaction with him. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> they struck a fist and a foot behind on him and drove him on in the road. He was obliged to walk and to walk fast, for they gave him no rest. He thought himself that there was not a wet path or a dirty, or a crooked contrary road in the whole country that he had not walked that night. The night was at times very dark, as the night is, <laughs> and whenever there would come a cloud across the moon, he could see nothing, and then he used often to fall. 
Sometimes he was hurt, sometimes he escaped, but he was obliged always to rise on the moment and to hurry on. Sometimes the moon would break out clearly, and then he would look behind him and see the little people following at his back. That is a disconcerting thing. Uh, super, super disturbing. <clears throat> and he heard them speaking amongst themselves, talking and crying out, and screaming like a flock of seagulls. They're, they're getting ready to have satisfaction with them, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's what little people sound like when they're uh, when they're gonna have satisfaction. And, and if he was to save his soul, he never understood as much as one word of what they were saying. Well, I mean, they were screaming like seagulls, so yeah. I don't know why you would. Yeah. He did not know how far he had walked when at last one of them cried out to him, "Stop here!" He stood, and they all gathered round him. "Do you see those withered trees over there?" says the old boy to him again. Temple Demas is among those trees, and you must go in there by yourself, for we cannot follow you or go with you. You must remain here. Go on boldly. Teague looked from him, and he saw a high wall that was in places half broken down in an old gray church on the inside of the wall, and about a dozen withered old trees scattered here and there around it. There was neither leaf nor twig on any of them but their bare, crooked branches were stretched out like the arms of an angry man when he threatens. He had no help for it, but was obliged to go forward. He was a couple of hundred yards from the church, but he walked on and never looked behind him until he came to the gate of the churchyard. The old gate was thrown down and he had no difficulty in entering. He turned then to see if any of the little people were following him. But there came a cloud over the moon, and the night became so dark that he could see nothing. He went into the churchyard, and he walked up the old grassy pathway leading to the church. When he reached the door, he found it locked. The door was large and strong, and he did not know what to do. At last, he drew out his knife with difficulty. He had a knife this whole time. Oh, my God. Oh, good he Lord. He's such a moron. God, this such dude is an idiot. An idiot. Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> he, he had a knife yeah. and, and and apparently, you know, let a corpse have his way with him. So yeah, he's, and he's like, you know, uh, this isn't knife worthy. <laughs> yet. Yeah, well, anyways, he's pulling it out now. Okay. He's like, at last, he drew out his knife with difficulty yeah. and stuck it in the wood to try if it were not rotten, but it was not. Now he said to himself, I have no more to do. The door is shut and I can't open it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty Guess quick. I'm moving on. For the words were rightly shaped in his own mind, a voice in his ear said to him, search for the key on the top of the door or on the wall. He started. Who is that speaking to me? <laughs> he cried, turning around, but he saw no one. The voice said in his ear again, search for the key on top of the door or on the wall. What's that? He said and sweat running from his forehead. Who spoke to me? It's I. The corpse that spoke to you, said the voice. Uh, well, this makes it a more interesting corpse, yeah. The corpse is talking. Can you talk? Said <laughs> Steve. <laughs> wow, he is dumb. This is a dumb one. Oh, yes. he, he was just talking to you, T. Come on. Now and again, wow. said the corpse. He searched for the key and he found it on top of the wall. He was too much frightened to say any more, but he opened the door wide and as quickly as he could, and he went in with the corpse on his back. It was dark as pitch inside, and poor T began to shake and tremble. Light the candle, said the corpse. <laughs> uh -huh. T is dumb. He's really dumb. T put his hand in his pocket as well as he was able and drew out a flint and steel. He struck a spark out of it and lit a burnt rag he had in his pocket. He blew it until it made a flame and he looked around him. The church was very ancient and part of the wall was broken down. The windows were blown in or cracked and the timber of the seats was rotten. There were six or seven old iron candlesticks left there still and in one of those candlesticks Teague found the stump of an old candle and he lit it. He was still looking round him on the strange and horrid place in which he found himself when the old corpse, the cold corpse, whispered in his ear, 
bury me now, bury me now. There's a spade. And leaning all his weight on the handle of the spade, he raised it. When the first flag was raised, it was not hard to raise the others near it, and he moved three or four of them out of their places. The clay that was under them was soft, and it was easy to dig. But it, it's not like the our soil here. No, no, not at all. No, it, 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 it's all rocks here. Hit a boulder. <laughs> well, you hit a boulder a half inch down, I'm done. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. Uh, so when the first flag was raised, it was not hard to raise the others near it, and he moved three or four of them out of their places. The clay that was under was soft and easy to dig, but he had not thrown up more than three or four shovelfuls when he felt the iron touch something soft, uh, like flesh. I know. Well, just anywhere you dig is a body that is that is a little weird. Well, I, I mean... Couldn't you move like two feet in, over and in, try again? In, in churches in Europe, yeah. it probably is like every yeah. two feet is a body. Yeah, they they did like that a lot. Yeah, too. They're stacked. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> there's a lot of them. <laughs> it's actually kind of strangely fascinating. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, so where are we? Something about... Oh, when he, when he felt... <laughs> Now, I don't know why it would still be soft. It's a very old church. It, it should just be bone, but I guess he's got himself a, a soft one. Uh, a gooey one. A gooey one. Uh, when he felt the iron touch something soft like flesh, he threw up three or four more shovelfuls from around it, and then he saw that it was another body that had been buried in the same place. I'm afraid I'll never be allowed to bury the two bodies in the same hole, said Teague. Who wasn't gonna uh, allow him to? You're just you and the corpse. There's there's nobody else there. Like, there's you and the totally talking corpse and, and the non-talking corpse. Like I mean, like, you could throw him in there. They, hey. I don't understand. You corpse, they're on my back, says he. <laughs> hey you. Will, you. will you be satisfied if I bury you down here? But the corpse never answered him a word. That's a good sign. <laughs> to do himself. I guess that the, the yeah, corpse stopped talking, I mean, you know. Yeah, sure. Maybe he's getting quiet. <laughs> <clears throat> and he thrust the spade down in the earth again. Perhaps he hurt the flesh of the other body. Oh, no. Uh, For the dead man that was buried there stood up in the grave and shouted an awful shout. Who, who, who? Go, go, go! Or you're a dead, dead, dead man! Wow. All the corpses talk to Apparently they're just very chatty. <clears throat> very chatty. And then he fell back in the grave again. That oh. didn't take long. I, no. I mean, don't worry about it. Throw the other corpse in. I mean, throw him in, cover him up, and run, man. Yeah. Like, Teek said afterwards that of all the wonderful things he saw that night, that was the most awful to him. Well, I mean, that, that would be pretty, pretty gross, bad. yeah. His hair stood upright on his head like the bristles of a pig. The cold sweat ran off his face, and then came a tremor over all his bones, until he thought that he must fall. <laughs> <laughs> but after a while he became bolder, when he saw that the second corpse remained lying quietly there, and he threw in the clay on it again, and he smoothed it overhead, and he laid down the flags carefully as they had been before. It can't be that he'll rise up any more said he. I don't know why not, it, if he did once. Well, he covered him back up, so uh, okay. he, it's clay. Clay's <clears throat> kind of hard to yeah. get through. He went down the aisle a little <laughs> further and drew near to the door and began raising the flags again, looking for another bed for the corpse on his back. He took up three or four flags and put them aside. What's the deal with all the flags? Is that something flags. I don't understand I, I about, like, Irish like, or like, uh, I don't, I don't get it. Like, like European Catholic or something? It's not Catholic. Catholic. No, no. Irish European, Catholic. I, I, that I could not say. Yeah, me neither. I couldn't say. No, certainly not American <clears throat> Catholic though. I don't know. Well, what about is? Flags. That's. Made <laughs> and turned the ground. Teague looked from him, and he saw a spade lying beside the altar. He took it up, and he placed the blade under a flag that was in the middle of the aisle. He went down the aisle a little further, and drew near to the door, and began raising the flags again, looking for another bed for the corpse on his back. He took up three or four flags and put them aside, and then he dug the clay. 
He was not long digging until he laid bare an old woman <laughs> without thread upon her but her shirt. Awkward. A little awkward. She was more lively than the first corpse. <laughs> For he had scarcely taken any of the clay away from about her when she sat up and began to cry. You have to read this one. Oh, you bodach clown. Ha, you bodach. <laughs> Where has he been that he got no bed? <laughs> no, no, I, I, the, the, the ho, you bodach thing, um, I don't know. Okay. That's like the first thing you say to someone that you've seen since you've been buried. Does it just seem like really it, it, badly it's, chosen uh, words? Yeah. It's very yeah. formal. It quite. <laughs> Poor Teague drew back, and when she found that there was that she was getting no answer, she closed her eyes gently. She saw his eyes. Uh, She's a gooey one too. No, yeah. oh, poor Poor Teague drew back, and when she found that she was getting no answer, she closed her eyes gently lost her vigor and fell back quietly and slowly under the clay. Teague did to her as he had done to the man. We don't want to know about that. He threw the clay back on her and left the flags down overhead. He began digging again near the door. You're just digging all over the church. I, I they're, thought, all, they're, they're burying them awfully shallow too. I mean, it would take a really long time. Well, like time you said, they're down. probably stacked. So. Yeah, they probably they probably are. He began digging again near the door, but before he had thrown up more than a couple of shovelfuls, he noticed the man's hand laid bare by the spade. By my soul, I'll go no further then, said he, said he to himself. What use is it for me? And he threw the clay in again and settled the flags as they had been before. He left the church then, and his heart was heavy enough, but he shut the door and locked it. And he left the key where he found it, he sat down on a tombstone that was near the door and began thinking. He was in great doubt what he should do. He laid his face between his two hands and cried for grief and fatigue, since he was dead certain at this time, nice pun, <laughs> dead certain at this time that he never would come home alive. He made another attempt to loosen the hands of the corpse that were squeezed around his neck, <laughs> but they were as tight as if they were clamped. And the more he tried to loosen them, the tighter they squeezed him. He was going to sit down once more when the cold, horrid lips of the dead man said to him, Carrick Fad Vic Oris. And he remembered the command of the good people to bring the corpse with him to that place if he should be unable to bury it where he had been. There's a lot, a lot of churches to go to. He rose up and looked about them. I don't know the way, he said. As soon as he had uttered the word, the corpse stretched out suddenly his left hand and that had been tightened around his neck and kept it pointing out, showing him the road he ought to follow. Teague went in the direction that the fingers were stretched and passed out of the churchyard. He found himself on an old, ruddy, stony road and he stood still again, not knowing where to turn. The corpse stretched out its bony hand a second time and pointed out to him another road not the road by which he had come when approaching the old church. Teak followed the road, and whenever he came to a path or a road meeting it, the corpse always stretched out his hand and pointed with its fingers, showing him the way he was to take. Many was the crossroad he turned down, and many was the crooked boring he walked, until he saw from him an old burying ground at last beside the road. But there was neither church nor chapel nor any other building in it. The corpse squeezed him tightly, and he stood. Bury me, bury me in the burying ground, said the voice. Teague drew over towards the old burying place, and he was not more than about twenty yards from it, when raising his eyes he saw hundreds and hundreds of ghosts. <sighs> Quite an interesting night. <clears throat> yeah. Men, women, and children. This is probably because of that that pipe uh, well, I mean, he was smoking on. Yeah. Sitting on the top of the wall about or standing on the inside of it, or running backwards or forwards and pointing at him, while he could see their mouths opening and shutting as if they were all speaking, though he heard no word nor any sound amongst them at all. He was afraid to go forward, so he stood where he was, and the moment he stood, all the ghosts became quiet and ceased moving. 
Then Teague understood that it was trying to keep them from going on, that they were. He walked a couple of yards forwards and immediately the whole crowd rushed together toward the spot to which he was moving and they stood so thickly together that it seemed to him that he could never break through them. There goes. Yeah, uh, there goes. They're, 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 they're pretty insubstantial, so you yeah. know, go ahead. I mean, Even though he had a mind to try. But he had no mind to try it. <laughs> he had a mind to try, but he didn't. But have not a mind really, to try so it. not really. He went yeah. back broken and dispirited. And when he had gone a couple of hundred yards from the burying ground, he stood again, for he did not know what way he was to go. He heard the voice of the corpse in his ear saying, Team Pole Ronan! And the skinny hand was stretched out again, pointing him out the road. As tired as he was, he had to walk. And the road was neither short nor even. The night was darker than ever, and it was difficult to make his way. Many was the toss he got, and many a bruise they left on his body. And at last he saw Temple Ronan from him in the distance, standing in the middle of the burying ground. He moved over towards it and thought he was all right and safe when he saw no ghosts or anything else on the wall. And he thought he would never be hindered now from leaving his load off him at last. He moved over to the gate, but as he was passing in, he tripped on the threshold. That's a mistake. Uh, Don't ever trip on the threshold. That's a uh, bad mojo. Before he could recover himself, something that he could not see seized him by the neck. Uh, what was it not the same corpse? I mean, doesn't he have a corpse? He already has a neck? I thought he did. What? By the hands and by the feet, okay. Okay. And bruised him. And shook him. And choked him. Bruised. Until he was nearly dead. Well. And it, well, I mean the corpse on his back was not helping. Not helping. He's like at whatever. All. And, and at last he was lifted up and carried more than a hundred yards from that place and then thrown down in an old dike with the corpse still clinging to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 12 year old moment. Yeah. <laughs> he rose up, bruised and sore, but feared to go near the place again, for he had seen nothing the time he was thrown down and carried away. You corpse, up on my back, said he. <laughs> Shall I go over again to the churchyard? But the corpse never answered him. He's not very helpful. Mm. That's a sign you don't wish me to try it again, said Teague. The mind reader. Yeah. <laughs> he was now in great doubt as to what he ought to do when the corpse spoke in his ear. Imlog Fada! Wow. Oh, murder, said Teague. <laughs> Must I bring you there? If you keep me long walking like this, I'll tell you I'll fall under you. He went on, however, in the direction the corpse pointed out to him. He could not have told himself how long he had been going. When the dead man behind suddenly squeezed him and said, There. There. Well. Teague looked from him and he saw a little low wall that was so broken down in places that it was no wall at all. It was in a great wide field in from the road and only for three or four great stones at the corners that were more like rocks than stones, there was nothing to show that there was either graveyard or burying ground. Is this Imlog Fada? Shall I bury you here? said Teague. Yes, said the voice. But I see no grave or gravestone, only this pile of stone, said Teague. The corpse did not answer. It's kind of an asshole corpse. Yeah, I mean, but stretched out helpful. its long, fleshless hand to show Teague the direction in which he was to go. Teague went on accordingly, but he was greatly terrified, for he remembered what happened to him at the last place. He went on with his heart in his mouth, as he said himself afterwards. But when he came to within 15 or 20 yards of the little low square wall, there broke out a flash of lightning, bright yellow and red, with blue streaks in it. That's special lightning. That's the devil's lightning there, if there ever was. <laughs> and, went, and went around the wall in one course, and it swept by as fast as the swallow in the clouds, and the longer Teague remained looking at it, the faster it went. Yeah, you're not going to want that. No. Till at last it became light, became like a bright ring of flame around the old graveyard, which no one could pass without being burnt by it. Teague never saw from the time he was born, and never saw afterwards so wonderful or so splendid a sight as that was. 
round with the flame, white and yellow and blue sparks leaping out from it as it went, and although at first it had been no more than a thin narrow line, it increased slowly until it was at last a great broad band. And it was continually getting broader and higher and throwing out more brilliant sparks till there was never a color on the ridge of the earth that was not to be seen in that fire. And lightning never shone and flame never flamed that was so shining and so bright as that. Seems a little that, poor, but uh, I mean, I don't think I would want to you know, that. Maybe a little superfluous about yeah. the description of this thing. You it, know. It's, it's sounding quite, yeah. A little bit. Moving on. Okay. Teak was amazed. Well, I don't know why after this whole night. Yeah. He was half dead with fatigue and he had no courage left to approach the wall. <laughs> there fell a mist over his eyes and there came a suron in his head and he was obliged to sit down upon a great stone to recover himself. He could see nothing but the light and he could hear nothing but the whir of it as it shot round the paddock faster than a flash of lightning. As he sat there on the stone, the voice whispered once more in his ear, Kill Bredia. And the dead man squeezed him so tightly that he cried out. <laughs> <laughs> the story's hilarious. He rose again, sick, tired, trembling, and went forwards as he was directed. The wind was cold and the road was bad, and the load upon his back was heavy, and the night was dark, and he himself was nearly worn out, and if he had very much further to go, he must have fallen dead under his burden. At last the corpse stretched out its hand and said to him, Bury me there. This is the last burying place, said Teague in his own mind. And the little gray man said I'd be allowed to bury him in some of them, so it must be this. It can't be, but they'll let him in here. The first faint streak of the ring of day was appearing in the east, always getting close, and the clouds were beginning to catch fire, but it was darker than ever, for the moon was set and there were no stars. Make haste, make haste, said the corpse. You like, you like my corpse voice? I do. Make haste. It's pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's great. It's okay. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> said, and Teague hurried forward as well as he could to the graveyard, which was a little place on a bare hill with only a few graves in it. He walked boldly in through the open gate, and nothing touched him. And did he either hear or see anything? He came to the middle of the ground, and then stood up and looked round him for a spade or shovel to make a grave. Now, the little people didn't even <coughs> give him anything to dig with? Uh, like, all this time he's just all been these, winging it? No, all these churches, they, they all just... have shovels in case you want to bury corpses in the middle of them. Okay. They, I mean, they keep, if you keep wander a shovel in, there in the middle just, of the night, you can just bury somebody. Just in case. Just in case. Okay, well, that's, that's a good that's that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. As he was turning around and searching, he suddenly perceived what startled <clears throat> him greatly. A newly dug grave right before him. That's a bad sign. No, he like moved that. over to it and looked down, and there at the bottom he saw a black coffin. Mm. Oh, he, he's making mistakes. He clambered <laughs> he's down. Making in, <laughs> he's making mistakes. He went in. Wait, wait, wait. He clambered down into the hole uh, and lifted the lid. Oh, you idiot. And, and found that, as he thought it would be, the coffin was empty. Mm. He had hardly mounted up out of the hole and was standing on the brink when the corpse, which had clung to him for more than eight hours, suddenly relaxed his hold on his neck and loosens his shins from around his hips. Ugh. Oh, that that was... Eight hours of that. It's got to be rough, <laughs> man. <laughs> that's rough. That, that, yeah. yeah. It sank down with a plop into the open coffin. Ooh. He's tired. <laughs> Teague <laughs> fell down on his two knees at the brink of the grave and gave thanks to God. He made no delay then, but pressed down the coffin lid in its place and threw in the clay over it with his two hands. Oh, he's lucky. He could have totally been ended up just in that coffin. I know. Yeah. That's what I was expecting. Yeah, I was kind of expecting yeah. that. I thought the course would pull him down in there. Yeah. You're like, when, hey. You're like, hey, <laughs> we're buddies for all eternity. Uh, no, not that kind of buddy. <laughs> and when the grave was filled up, and he sampled... No. I'm sorry. And when the grave was filled up, he stamped and leaped on it with his feet until it was firm and hard, and he, then he left that place. The sun was fast rising as he finished his work, and the first thing he did was to return to the road and look out for a house to rest himself in. 
just anybody's house? I mean, he's just going to go in anybody's house? Off with his uncle. Uh, but he found an inn at last, thankfully, and lay down upon a bed there and slept till night. Then he rose up and ate a little and fell asleep again till morning. When he awoke in the morning, he hired a horse and rode home. He was more than 26 miles from home where he was, and he had come all that way with the dead body on his back in one night. All the people oh, all the people at his home thought that he must have left the country, and they rejoiced greatly when they, they did they really, did they really, did they? I think he added that one. I, I think he yeah. added that one. Maybe right. Mary rejoiced, but she sounds kind of sad, so. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the people at his own home thought that he must have left the country, and they rejoiced greatly when they saw him come back. Everyone began asking him where he had been, but he would not tell anyone except his father. He was a changed man from that day. He never drank too much, he never lost his money over cards, and especially he would not take the world and be out late by himself of a dark night. I mean... I mean, you do learn a lesson. When you have a corpse on your back awkwardly for yes. eight hours. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it teaches lesson it. learned. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, <laughs> if you have a problem, child, do this to them. You could call the fairies and strap a corpse to his back yeah. for eight hours. <laughs> I was just going to say, strap a corpse to their back for eight hours and they'll get the message. Problem solved. Yeah. He was not a fortnight at home until he married Mary. The girl he had been loved to. The girl he had been in love with. Uh -huh, sure. yeah, yeah. That's oh, why dear. I tripped over those words. Yeah. <laughs> and it's at their wedding the sport was, and uh, it's he was that happy man from that day forward. And it's all I wish that we may be as happy as he was. The end. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Please hit subscribe and like if you will. Good night.